I see all the time on places like Reddit uh, where people will ask, do you need to keep PLA in a safe storage space? The reason for this is that PLA can pull moisture out of the air, and answers usually come up like this. Uh, it depends. If you search 3D printing help websites about the issue, they'll tell you to always store your PLA in a dry environment. Usually this is in the form of a toad or container with a desiccant inside. These packs are uh, what you would find in most beef jerky or new shoes that say do not eat. Uh, and the purpose of these packs are that they are extremely dry. They pull moisture from the ambient air around them. So instead of going into your PLA, the moisture goes into these desiccant packs. So it just so happened that I had a spool of Hatchbox PLA that had been sitting out for over a year. Um, it's been sitting on the desk that you see my 3D printer sitting on. Uh, I did not store it in any kind of tote. It has literally just been out in the open air. I didn't have any other brands or colors or anything like that that were sitting out that long. Uh, I only have one brand and color, uh, which is this Hatchbox PLA, uh, and it is black. Um, not exactly scientific. I wish I had a few more um, uh, variables, a few more uh, brands and colors, but I think it's interesting nonetheless and uh, to find out if it does affect my print quality at all. So why does getting moisture into your PLA matter? Uh, if you get moisture into your filament, it can cause it to boil whenever it reaches the hot nozzle. The nozzles are typically around 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, or a little bit below that or a little bit over that. And the boiling point of water is of course 100 degrees Celsius. So whenever it boils off the moisture it causes bubbles and then that can lead to issues like under or over extrusion uh, which ultimately will result in a lower print quality and what you uh, end up with is a uh, significantly uh, less quality print. Now full disclosure I do live in Virginia, more specifically Western Virginia. Uh, it's mountainous where I live. Generally the weather is pretty nice most of the year. Uh, and of course we have our hot days, we have our humid days, and we typically get a few good snows a year. But generally I would consider it more of a Goldilocks climate. To further investigate I did some googling uh, to learn more about Virginia's climate. I've lived here my whole life and I've actually never really dug deep into it. Uh, I found out that Virginia ranks 34th in relative humidity. Uh, and so that kind of begs the question, what is relative humidity? Uh, relative humidity is simply how much moisture is in the air. Uh, if you think of it this way, if you reach 100% humidity, the air is completely saturated, and then it begins to rain. 80% uh, humidity, you would think of as a soupy day, it feel really hot outside. Uh, one of those days where you go outside and, and you just feel like you start sweating. Uh, and then 20% relative humidity would be an extremely dry day where you might need to make sure that you keep your nose moisturized or it might start bleeding because it dries out. Also, I would like to note that my PLA was stored in my basement, uh, which does have a dehumidifier. Uh, it stays at 40% uh, percent all year round, uh, but in the winter it typically drops below that because the ambient relative humidity is so low. Uh, at the time of this video, the relative humidity in my basement was 36, as you can see, uh, on the um, gauge here that's on my dehumidifier. So without further ado, I loaded up my PLA into my Ender 3 Pro, set the nozzle to 200 degrees Celsius and my bed to 70 degrees Celsius, uh, and set it to a standard print quality in Cura, which is a 0 0.2 millimeter um, uh, layer height. At first I just wanted to print a test print. It was actually one of those overhang prints, uh, but I ended up getting some pretty severe warping at the very beginning. Uh, I don't think it was because of the filament, I think it was just poor bed adhesion because it was pretty cold in my basement uh, because it is the middle of January. Uh, to further prove that the filament was performing okay, I did happen to take some photos of the first couple layers uh, while it was printing and it looks pretty much textbook. Uh, the layers look good, I don't see any kind of signs of over or under extrusion. Um, I, th I think just my, my bed just got too cold uh, and the air around it was so to combat it. I raised the bed temperature about 10 degrees Celsius, fired up a space heater uh, to raise the ambient temperature, and then also used a raft instead of a, a, a skirt uh, to, to help with the adhesion. I also switched the model out to a benchy boat uh, because one, I was running short on time, and two, uh, I wanted to see how the print looked with something that was actually um, a, an actual object and not just uh, a series of overhangs and small little circles. The print ended up coming out pretty well. I didn't notice any kind of telltale signs of under or over extrusion. Uh, I didn't see any kind of layer separation or anything like that. And also while it was printing I kept listening for any kind of popping noises. 
Uh, if you hear popping whenever you're printing, it's a good indicator that you do have moisture inside of your filament because it's boiling. Uh, but I never heard any of that. Uh, I didn't notice any difference in print quality from my old filament versus my new filament either. Um, I don't have a, a picture of um, any other benchmarks or things like that because like I said I was running short on time but uh, some of the other prints that I've done recently with newer filament I didn't have any kind of issues. So is all of this talk about PLA just a big hoax and an attempt to get you to spend more money on filament and a big conspiracy between the desiccant and storage tote companies? No, uh, I don't think so. As I mentioned earlier, I do live in a relatively nice climate. I have a dehumidifier in my basement, and I'm sure that if I lived in Florida or I didn't have a central air-controlled house, uh, this test would have came out a lot different. Um, if you're worried about your filament, desiccant and storage containers are pretty inexpensive, uh, especially relative to things like filament. And it's better to be safe than sorry, in my opinion. Uh, again, this video only covers this one brand of PLA and is not at all a scientific experiment. I just thought it would be interesting to see how a year old spool of PLA would perform, and I hope you did too. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, do whatever you want to. Um, I'll try to make more videos in the future. Take care.